I don't know what like I don't know what season it is for television but like there's so much to binge right now I, I know j- I just like finished Firefly Lane I watched the whole like sec I know but <laughs> but look I watched it it already happened I can't take it back and those <laughs> you know six eight hours of my life um I wish I would have been a little bit more productive like doing something you know because I I don't know I I just think it would have been nice to do like a puzzle or something Mm, like a Wongo puzzle something that's like stimulating your brain yes good for your brain beautiful also yes and Wongo puzzles are the perfect balance of a good challenge but without being so hard you just like give up on life you know it's like still very fun and yeah but still challenging so you don't feel like this is for babies you know like it is for grown adults and children yeah like you got to put a little work in you know what I mean yeah um I one time did a gradient puzzle, which oh. I, I'm obsessed with puzzles. Like, I love them yeah. so much. So that's yeah. why I'm very excited about doing an ad for a puzzle company. Yeah. Um, And a gradient puzzle is, like... So hard. So hard. And yeah. that was a bit much. So <laughs> I need something a little less intense than that. So... It can't be too hard that it's, like, you know, uh, ending in divorce or... Um, <laughs> or- <laughs> or existential crisis yeah right. yeah but, no but hard enough that it's a good challenge and you feel good about yourself when you're done yeah and also it has to like look good too um yeah so these puzzles are 100 percent wooden puzzles so they'll last forever um each piece is hand drawn so we're talking no two pieces are the same and you'll discover some fun whimsy pieces as you work through it like Ooh. that are in the shape of something cool oh I like think. not just your standard jigsaw puzzle piece yes yeah. they come in a custom wooden box which is perfect for storage and gifting Ooh, you you mentioned the designs they're so beautiful mm-hmm. um and you mentioned the unique shapes which is really fun and both of those things are specifically what makes wongo puzzles very unique because it mm-hmm. isn't just you know like the chicken nuggets are all are just like four shapes and like sometimes puzzles are just like four shapes mm-hmm. no not wongo puzzles Mm-mm. sometimes <laughs> it's like it's like a um a nod to the actual puzzle that you're doing the the shape itself is Ooh. like yeah it's real. they're really cool i've yeah. uh, been perusing the the um the different puzzles they have on their website and uh, Mother's Day is coming up, you guys. Mm-hmm. So there is a, I'm not going to say which one in case my mom hears this, but uh, there's one that is like perfect for her. It's so perfect. It's a turtle. She <laughs> loves turtles. <laughs> she I got to let you. I gotta let you know what what's on there um and that's that's I think I'm gonna get that for her for uh, Mother's Day so if you want to if you want to get your mom or yourself or just a special person in your life who loves puzzles something this is a good opportunity to do so all right well what are you waiting for go to wongopuzzles.com and pick your puzzle today and be sure to use the promo code DTFU and you'll get 10% off your order yep uh, this is the most fun you've had with a puzzle guaranteed or your money back. Go to Wongo, that's W-O-N-G-O puzzles.com and use the code DTFU to get 10% off your order and get puzzling right now. Stay puzzling. <laughs> Stay puzzling, y'all. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Aaron and Nicole. This is dude that's fucked up. Welcome, you guys. How's wow. everybody doing? Oh. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow. Hope everyone's great. I'm kind of nervous because I just ate dinner and I feel, you know, I like ate pretty quickly, and I'm like, is it? Is this like, you know, when it drops down and you have to diarrhea? <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. And I'm like, is this going to be an issue? I think it's fine. It, it just, I just feel like full, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just you never know. You never. Or is know. it like a gas bubble? We're. I mean, we'll find out. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Jack is always like concerned if anybody has a stomachache. He'll be like, "Is it a gas bubble?" 
Because that's happened to him before. Is like, it in like a condescending way? Like when you go to the emergency room and you're like, I'm having appendicitis. And they're like, no, it's gas, man. It's gas. Yeah. yeah. No, he's, it's, he's, it's happened to him once before where he's like had, you know, like where you get a really painful gas bubble. Yeah. And it like freaked him out, you know. So it's like it's seared into his mind as like, you know, if anybody's having stomach issues, he's like. I feel your pain. You oh know what I God. mean? Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's, he's empathizing and, but also being like, could it be this? Could you it? Know? Yeah. You know, yeah. it could be. It, you know what it could be? <laughs> A gas, gas bubble. bubble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he also, he knows all about sharks because. Oh, bless he, his heart. It ha- happens quite freq- frequently with him. So. Yeah. He just it doesn't know yet. He doesn't know. He's yeah. He's still learning. So. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, mm-hmm. some some people never learn. Mm mm. Yeah. Yep. He's never. He's learning now, though. Yeah. Well, good for him. <laughs> it's all it's all a learning process. Oh mm-hmm. my god. Well, this uh, episode might make your your stomach hurt. Oof. Just yeah. talking about it. It'll make a quarter of uh. It'll make a quarter of the entire human population's tummies hurt. <laughs> um, also, today's topic is a perfect amalgamation of like a listener pitch and things that are happening in the current like zeitgeist, mm-hmm. which is very fun. I love when this happens. Like Me when too. S- someone pitches us a topic and then we're like, OK, put it on our you know, we put it in our notes. And mm-hmm. then on Mondays when we're talking about it. It's like I brought up something to Erin and she goes, oh, my God, that reminds me of this. And then it's like a perfect little a little come together, a little melding, yeah. a little melt, a little melting pot. Yeah. Deliciousness. A little, f- a little fondue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not a fondant. It's a fondue. <laughs> Definitely a do. Oh, man. Um, Before we jump in, do we have anything to talk about? I don't think so. Like any business? Uh. Go to our uh, our Patreon if you're feeling yeah. like you need more content, I, th- I think. Yeah, we have a Patreon. Yeah, we have a Patreon. And part of uh, one of the perks of being a pat- patron uh-huh. is that you could join our Discord. And it's super fun. We're yeah. always in there. Yeah. Talking shit. We had I've... so much fun talking about the Met oh, Gala. Oh, my God. I oh my God. I missed live blogging things or like mm-hmm. live tweeting things. I haven't done it in so long, but it was always so much fun, like during award ceremonies and stuff. So for sure, like moving forward, I'm going to start like threads in there for things I'm watching. You know, you'll do yeah. the same. Anyone could do the same. Anyone could do that in the group. We need um, to make a, a RuPaul's Drag Race <gasps> All Stars We or just like a, a RuPaul's Drag Race like channel. Oh, channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, or and then we could have you know the seasons and it, yeah. All Stars is coming up, so yes, we'll yes. definitely be talking about that in the Discord. I think the premiere is next week. I yeah, think so yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll start. We'll start a whole channel for that. But Ugh. anybody could start a thread in like any of the channels for things that they're like things that are happening in real time or something they want to talk about and like have mm-hmm. a focused conversation about. But it was so fun. And uh, yeah, I was it was fun because there was like a few of us watching or like seeing the looks in real time and just yeah, talking about our favorites. Jenna Ortega, Ortega, my God, was as I said in the discord, but like that's my heart's aesthetic. Like Mm. if I could just look like that, like fashion wise and like uh, hair wise and makeup, I Mm -hmm. would all the time. I would just. It, it it was so cool. It was like yeah. very feminine, but like very edgy and goth. Yeah. And I love yeah. it. It was it was um very like chic hot topic, like very yes. high end hot topic. It is. It's like P- Parisian hot topic. Yeah. <laughs> it's like old school. It's like um, Moulin Rouge hot topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it really was that. Yeah. I love it. It's it's it was giving me everything I've ever needed. I honestly loved like all, like so many good looks. Um, mm. I thought the theme was trash, but um, yeah, problematic. Uh huh. Um, but I like loved Bad Bunny's backless tuxedo. I still I haven't that, seen the back. Oh my god! It's I it, it's I it's just so cool. Like uh. I don't know. 
I've never seen anything like like a, a man or anything handsome. like that. Oh my god, he's so hot. Oh my god, um, the men if, did really well this year. The men did well. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Daddy yeah. Pedro. Just oh my god. really with his slutty knee. Just oh really... my god. Also, like you know, the men wear white or black for the most part. It's like mm-hmm. they like make take some risks, you know, or like they'll have different textures, but it'll be all like monochromatic. Not Pedro. He was like, mm-hmm. you know what? How about red? I'm going to look like a member of craft work and just like really <laughs> did make it work. You yeah. Know? He was oh, just, my God. He, he was... showed up as a hot one um, <laughs> fresh off the heels of his appearance on Hot Ones. Yes. Oh, that's such. it was such a good episode. Anyway. It was good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy things like that. So we'll be we, we always have like a fun thread going on in Discord. Yeah. So check that out. That's our Patreon. It's Patreon.com. Slash GTFU podcast. Um, we're talking today about the. God, it's like it's like so much. Um, <laughs> big milk uh, industry. Milk. milk. We're talking about milk. Uh, <laughs> big milk. Big dairy. Big dairy. The big, big American D. dairy. Yeah. Uh, the uh, cheese caves of Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, what the fuck is going on with what the fuck is going on in here on this day? Yeah. Um, with why is there cheese caves? How is there cheese caves? Why is there so much milk? What are yeah. we doing? What is happening in America? Why were we all forced to drink milk as children? Oh, my God. Are people still forcing their children to drink milk? Yes. Yeah. I, I buy two gallons of milk like, <laughs> every couple weeks. OK, <laughs> so... Uh, well, so, yes, did you guys know that there are a series of caves just outside of Springfield, Missouri, that are hundreds, and within these caves, there are hundreds of thousands, not even hundreds of thousands, like millions? Billions? <laughs> Billions? Trillions? Billions of pounds <laughs> of cheese, American cheese, just literally chilling in converted limestone mines. These caves keep uh, it perfectly 36 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a perfect environment to store stockpiles of government-owned cheese, which comprises the world's 1.4 billion pounds of surplus cheese. Oh, my God. Like, that is a mind-boggling thing to think about. Are we the richest country when it comes to cheese? (laughs) This is what I'm saying. Like, money is fake, but cheese is real. Okay? Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> we Bitch, one... let me into those caves. Let <laughs> no, me no, no, no. <laughs> I can't imagine. Okay, if we were, like, in Italy or some shit and it was, like, a Parmesan cave, I'd say, yeah. But it's, like, I don't know. Isn't government cheese supposed to not be good? I was just, like, actually, this is what I was doing um, while I was lollygagging around before yeah. we got on to record I was looking up to see what people like their general the general consensus of people who ate government cheese was if it was good or not and a lot of people really liked it yeah Um, the 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 kind of the 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 idea of it is it's kind of like a shelf stable cheese like a Velveeta yeah like a Velveeta or like a a craft deluxe kind of Okay. Situation. Um, I mean, it should be refrigerated, but like people got this from the government as yeah. part of like a food assistance program back in like the uh, 70s and 80s. But uh, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But like I just I was curious because I, I was in the 80s. I don't believe I'm sure my parents at some point had to maybe get some of this cheese, but I don't remember um it specifically yeah I don't remember yeah. it specifically um so. I know Dak Shepard talks about it and I know and he's like interviewed people that have had it and like have a special place in their heart for it and yeah. it's like yeah it's kind of like a, a Velveeta type situation um mm-hmm. but I think now I guess in my present day and age if you would have asked me like 10 years ago I would I wouldn't have been such a cheese snob but mm. now I feel like One, it fucks my shit up, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not even lactose intolerant, but cheese is not great for me. And and because I think I always eat too much of it when, you know, it's like a cheese plate. Like when we were in Las Vegas. 
and we had a cheese plate and then we had that wheel of cheese pasta yeah it was not great for me um and i'm usually fine so it's just like i overdo it now so for me and i just want really nice cheese now high-end cheese not yeah uh not cheese that's been sitting in a cave in yeah i don't want the, the country I don't well like, no, no well that's where, yeah, that's yeah, where a lot that's of cheese, cheese comes from. from no 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 <laughs> uh well cave yeah cheese. <laughs> i'm i'm like more, more of a burrata fan so yeah yeah same <laughs> no. i no no i like I am, uh I, I like a hard cheese i like i a, love a hard cheese I yeah love a, but i also love a soft cheese so yeah i know so sue I like me it all. i know yeah <laughs> i don't know why i said that well so why you litigious why? i'm litigious bitch um <laughs> why why like why the fuck is this a thing? Why yeah. are there literal caves full of uh, millions and a billion, 1.4 billion pounds of fucking cheese? Oh my God. That's what, just how like, are people so starving in this country? Give them this the cheese. Just give people cheese. Come on. Just give people cheese. Um, it The reason why is it's, it's milk's fault. Yeah. Uh, basically, the price of milk is... It's always been volatile. Uh, it goes up and down based on, you know, limited supply. Yeah. F- it Because fluc- in fluctuating demand. Like, yeah. Uh, it, the demand goes up and down during the diff- different times of year. So and weird. also their milk production naturally rises in the spring because that's when a lot of cows have their calves. Yeah. And so that's when they're. But, you know, modern modern dairy farming is, you know. I don't know what that's all about, but it's pretty fucked up, I think. Um, yeah. So, and also demand for milk is generally at its highest in the fall when the school year starts, I guess. So, why? That's so weird. Like, suddenly the parents are... I know why, I think, actually. I have a theory. Hmm. When we get a little bit later in the episode. Uh, okay. But, I, yeah, I mean, I, it's weird, but I, it, I think it'll make sense. It's just coming to me right now, so... Yeah, and this this is all to help to help dairy farmers. The government looked for ways to like kind of step in and and calm the yeah. markets down because as the everything was fluctuating, it was causing milk prices to go up and then go down. And so it it's just the government was like, "Well, we need to really get everybody. We need to get to everything needs to calm its teats." So. <laughs> But of course, milk also has a short shelf life, um, so they couldn't do it just. There was not a lot of options with like the milk itself. So they yeah, they were can't like, they can't store it raw. Yeah, they were like, okay, what do we do here? Like, we got it. We could do powdered milk, but then they were like, process it, process that shit, and make <laughs> cheese with it. Um, and thus, we have classic American cheese. Yeah, it's a. Uh, maybe one of the shittiest forms of cheese i feel like i know what you're saying and especially after i just was like talking about my cheese snobbery but also it's so perfect for what it's good for yeah like a grilled cheese for creating a nacho a creamy nacho sauce you know yeah i i don't i would use it like grilled cheese cheeseburger egg Mm -hmm. sandwich anything where you need that maximum melt yeah, yeah, like you're mm-hmm. saying, like a nacho situation. Like I wouldn't put it on nachos, not like a slice like, of like no. But if you're single, making like no. rotel or whatever, yeah, rotel. Like you need it's the like, cube. You need the cube like Velveeta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you need a cheese product, and that's what product. American cheese is. Well, and so government cheese though is a step above that. It actually is a, not quite a cheese product. It is like real cheese. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, but it is heavily processed so right right it's not exactly like a molecule away from plastic like Velveeta is yeah but it's you know it's it's still cheap it's versatile it's versatile it's, yeah it's, yeah okay I want to talk a little bit about um why we like how milk got into the situation milk got into to have to have the American government swoop in and save mm-hmm. them um, mm-hmm. okay so f- first of all like I said 
I don't even know like we didn't even need milk in the first place okay like a quarter of the human population can't even digest it like Mm. that's lactose intolerance okay Um, and we didn't really ever need milk except for in like small groups of people in very specific climates Mm -hmm. so milk initially was to sustain people in cold climates it was like a means for survival because they weren't able to grow produce like Mm -hmm. if you're in you know wisconsin or whatever and it's snowing for like seven months of the year and everything's frozen you weren't able to grow produce so you had dairy cows and you sustained yourself off of milk and like milk Mm -hmm. products um and then during World War One, the U.S. sent a bunch of canned and powdered milk overseas to help sustain the soldiers and make sure they were properly nourished and to meet the demands in, um, you know, for this American product, all the farms in America started upping their like dairy production and they mm. shut down some of their other ones like they got rid of crops, you know. I feel like farming around that time was like very multifaceted. It wasn't like you're a very specific farmer. I'm a very specific farmer and we make different things. It's like yeah. people had livestock, people had vegetables and and yeah. um like wheat and grain and stuff, you know? Yeah. But during this time there was like a real big need for dairy products. They were sending them overseas. So all the farmers were like, "Oh, okay, everybody like Get rid of the corn or whatever. It's it's, it's the wartime, you know, wartime effort. mentality. Yeah, and everybody everybody needs to help out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So then, after World War One ended, there was a surplus, um, and they created an opportunity to market it like as a necessity to consumers. So it before that. It was like, you know, you used it as needed, but they're like, well, what if we could figure out a way to like make it so that this becomes a part of the daily diet of Americans? Mm -hmm. And so Big Dairy partnered with uh, schools to create uh, like the the dairy um, industry industry. Yeah. They partnered like with the government to create milk education programs. And this advised children to drink four glasses of milk every day. To start off with, I can't. That's pretty steep. And four? Yeah. I didn't even ever have to drink one. I, I was really? never made to drink milk. Yeah. Really? Oh. And I hated going to friends' houses to sleep over when I was like of the age where you you weren't really, you kind of had to eat whatever they gave you or whatever. Because mm-hmm. if they poured a glass of milk, I, I had to drink it. Like, I couldn't say no. I just oh couldn't. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I, I, uh, I, I drank a lot of milk when I was a kid. Um, my parents always served us milk with dinner. It yeah. Didn't matter what it was. Could have been oh. spaghetti and meatballs and a big and glass milk. of milk. Oh, my yeah. God. So it was like weird. Very 1950s. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or 1940s. Yeah. Because that's what, you know, my parents grew up doing was yeah. drinking milk all the time. Um, and this all comes from um, the turn of the century. They started doing these like studies about nutrition and they sort of determined that dairy was like very an an important part of a balanced diet but they really leaned way too hard into it I think way too hard like I mean because dairy is not necessary no no it's not the government saw though this opportunity to be like oh we did these nutrition studies like 20 30 years ago let's like reincorporate those back into the daily lives of people and then you know make market this product that we have a surplus of yeah to make people feel like they absolutely need to have it in their lives well and i think they recognize like the government was like shit we like kind of we we'll fuck over these farmers if, yeah if we don't find an, a way to help them now sell all this surplus dairy that they're making because they got rid of all their other crops yeah. So, like, how can we figure this out? And so milk producers got a boost from legislation in 1946 because the government actually developed the National School Lunch Program. And one of the caveats to that or one of the requirements instituted in schools through this program was that each meal that was given to a child, they were required to also have a glass of whole milk. Okay. So, like, government, the government was like, everybody needs the milk and they have to have it. 
Yeah. Um, and obviously this just created like way more demand. Um, I, I mean, still not enough to offset the massive amounts of <laughs> over milk. Uh, the <laughs> surplus of milk that they cre- had already created. The seas of milk. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just like not the thing I want to have a surplus of. I'm fine with a cheese surplus, but a, uh, I mean, yeah. milk, milk is on its own. Yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. The So then in 1949, the USDA introduced the Dairy Product Price Support Program, which was later known as the Milk Price. Wait. OK. The Dairy Product Price Support Program, later mm. known as the Milk Price Support Program. Like they were like, we're not even going to try to rope all the dairy products into it it's just milk it's your fucking fault bitch we're gonna have to support just you Uh, (laughs) milk take accountability yeah so when the price of dairy products sunk too low for farmers the usda would offer to buy up all the excess at a stable rate um so it 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 bought millions of pounds of cheese butter and dry milk from other from producers who would otherwise have lost a ton of money uh if they only relied on their regular retailers. So it's just. Yeah. They, basically, the kids weren't still weren't drinking enough milk, even though they were being forced to drink it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> we got to put all this fucking milk in a fire hose or something. We got to yeah, do something like, with it. Powder it. Yeah. They were doing, thinking of everything they absolutely could to get rid of all of this dairy. Um, condense it. Powder condense it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Make Tres leches cakes. We yeah. need we need to get rid of all the milk. Put them in the cake cave. <laughs> I wish. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> Maybe that's why like they insisted that Santa Claus needed a glass of milk with his cookies. Oh it probably came around this time. Mm-hmm. Or that was like a very clever parent where the milk was going bad. <laughs> like, oh, we got we oh, can't forget the glass of milk for Santa. And it's like a huge fucking glass. It's like yeah. the biggest glass. They're like oh. Santa needs this milk to sustain Ew. him all night long. And then yeah. it just sits out by the fireplace. Oh. Uh. Curdle, slowly curdling till he arrives. Oh, oh. poor Santa. Oh, man. OK, so this helped the dairy market stabilize. Producers would have steady income for pri- and prices for the products they would have and the for the products. Income and the prices for the products would eventually rise. God, that mm. was a hard sentence to get out. Yeah. Um. Then once the prices of dairy products hit 125 percent of the support price, the USDA would start selling off its stash in bulk. So they had to wait for it to get to a certain point before they could be like, we got to we're getting rid of this at oh. like cost or whatever. Yeah. Um. But it, of course, has a, had a downside. Um, the USDA buying up cheese prevented the prices from dipping too low, but the department also put a ceiling on how high the prices could climb. Oh, so, uh, I don't really feel bad. So the this uh, agricultural economist at the University of Missouri named Scott Brown explains, uh, this is especially true during the 1980s. You ended up with prices not being able to not able to move out of either end of the spectrum. It did create very stable prices, but most folks weren't very happy with that kind of operation and it was costly for the government. Okay. So they really But most folks aren't regular people. It's the dairy people. Yeah. And the and the government. So who cares? This is like this this created like something incredible for consumers. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like the milk like it's never going to be – you're never going to not be able to afford milk, essentially. Like, we just went through that egg situation where, like, mm-hmm. eggs were insanely expensive. Yeah. And it's like some, some people can't afford once they hit, like, a certain part to, like, include them in their diet. So yeah, this is so interesting. I know. it's it's This is, like – this whole thing made me kind of, like – it 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 opened up a door in my brain yeah. to like you know senior year economics class mm-hmm. where I was like oh yeah this is all just like everything is so such a fragile balance you yeah. know like thinking about like guns and butter you know how <laughs> you can't you you can only you have to if one goes up the other goes down like there's there's so much that needs to happen for everything to 
you know, stay in balance and the government tries to, do, you know, tries its best to control it. It's very complicated and complex, but this is like the general gist of what happens with milk, basically. Well, and I don't think like something like this is ideal in like a socialist country or situation because it's like okay if we keep it at this price you'll never make exceedingly high profits but Mm -hmm. also you like people can afford this so they'll be buying it you know versus we live in a capitalist society so obviously the farmers weren't happy because they were being told well we understand you could make more money but we're not going to allow you Mm -hmm. to make more money and like that obviously didn't work for (laughs) big dairy yeah, because big the, dairy came in swimming, swinging their dick, and they were like, <laughs> "Truly, there's the money. It's all about the money, always." Yeah. Um, so the USDA had to like pivot off of this uh, whole idea, um, and it started reducing the support prices and buying less stock. Mm. But that actually didn't have a huge impact. So it tried. The USDA tried getting rid of the automatic sell triggers and instead of selling out its stores of dairy products when market prices climbed to 125 percent of the support price it would leave it up to the secretary of agriculture to decide when to release the product Hmm. so it's like uh, and that person can't be bought (laughs) and then so this uh this this uh uh Agricultural economist uh, Scott Brown uh, says that it became a political football how to handle the release of the stocks. Um, And not only that, but if the Secretary of Agriculture decided to hold on to its stores past the previous 125% cutoff, stocks would keep accumulating. Like, like there's no slowing it down. They didn't tell them to stop making milk. Right. Products Um, and the cheese and the butter and dry milk would pile up and then the USDA would have to scramble to deal with them before they spoiled. Just a bunch of bullshit. It's all so stupid. Yeah. Just so fucking stupid. I think at some at one point during I think the 80s or 90s, they actually or it was some at some some point in there, they actually told the dairy farmers to stop producing anything for like five years or something. Wow. And it's it didn't make it. Like, it hardly made a difference. Like, we just had so much stockpile still. It was just, like, the fire hose just never, ever turned off. Oh, my God. And then the USDA finally decided to stop dicking around and ended the price support program in 2014. Wow. Yeah. Just, that's, like, pretty recent. Yeah. uh, But it kept hoarding the cheese and still does to this day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my only, god only now it's for use in food assistance programs um and in the l- latest cold storage report the usda shows little less than 1.5 billion pounds of cheese in storage along with 355 million pounds of butter oh my god. to 111 million pounds of pecans and just less than a billion pounds of french fries holy shit <laughs> Like, not just potatoes, but, like, French fries. They've already cut and processed it. Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. Um, And just FYI, only about 300 million pounds of the the cheese actually belongs to the USDA. Like, that's government-owned. Yeah. The rest is owned by private companies and stored by the USDA. So it's just, like, become, like, the caves. They're renting it out. Yeah. The caves have become, like, a a storage facility, basically. Yeah. Yeah. For, like... I'm picturing like craft and Velveeta wings <laughs> yeah. of the cave. Like it's over like- here we have Velveeta's <laughs> storage facility. Yeah. It's on consignment. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. And they're just like, yeah, you can like have it here until you sell it, but then you have to pay us when you do. Okay, you know how I know that it's like almost summer? Mm-hmm. I'm constantly dehydrated, no matter what. No matter yeah. what. I'm trying to drink so much more water and I just like I'm not drinking enough and my lips are dry and this is why I have to keep liquid IV like a box of the little tubes in the house at all times because that's like the only thing that if I dump it in my water I'm like good to go you know what I mean yeah it's I am I've used liquid IV for literal years um I I always have a box like in my bathroom because Mm. for whatever reason like 
I'm just like that's my routine. I get out of the shower and I chug water. Oh, oh yeah, it's good. Smart. Does it's being good. in the shower make you thirsty? <laughs> it's like water <laughs> reminder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, that's funny. I yeah, and I I always I I dude I've bought like liquid IV from Costco because yeah. I like need that much of it. No, I know. <laughs> and um, it really it, it tastes good too. It's good. Um, yeah, I used it a lot when I was nursing uh, Damien um, mm-hmm. and Jack. Um, and it's just you could feel it like you could feel the life draining out of your body when you're nursing oh. and when you're in the hot sun. So like I had my children when it was still hot outside. And so I was it was I was had a lot going working against me. So I really yeah. needed really needed to be <laughs> extra hydrated, get the electrolytes back into my body. Um, and liquid IV was doing it for me. I would oh literally put this on ice oh. and sit there with like a huge thing of water like and liquid IV and just like feel my life coming back into my body. Also, like I just can't drink plain water. Mm. I need a little pizzazz and liquid IV gives that to me, you know, That's like true. not mm-hmm. only is it very hydrating and it's obviously like that's a positive but it tastes good too so then it's like okay i can drink this huge ass glass of water Mm -hmm. because it's a delight we Mm -hmm. all know i love a mocktail we -hmm. all know i love to like spice up my water so Mm -hmm. it's perfect it really is um i love that you can throw like a little packet in your bag yes they're just like a little tube like and it's Mm -hmm. very grab go you can use it on the go also the packaging is very you know, some things like a tampon, you throw it into your purse and it rolls around in there. You can't use it. Mm-hmm. The packaging is very good. Like I've it's never durable. had one open. Yeah, I've never had one get gross. Even I've spilled water, like a water bottle in my bag and mm-hmm. the uh, it's still like good. Like it's yeah. not, it's like impenetrable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But also I think it's like, you know, it's not like a horrible, like plasticky thing. So No, no, no. It's just like good paper stock. Yeah. I feel like, you know what I mean? High like, quality paper high stock. Quality yeah. paper stock. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite flavor? I like the lemon lime. Oh man. I I love the strawberry uh mm. and pina colada. You know oh. what I, you know what I've done before? I've like mixed them together. Oh, I thought you were gonna say you made a cocktail with it. No, no, no. I that's <laughs> you could that's, I could, you could. You technically could. But just could. because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, and they have a new flavor that I really want to try, the sea berry flavor. I oh. am very interested. I also love the passion fruit and the guava. Very, oh, very good. So, okay. like, they have, like, real good flavors. Like, yeah, not just, good. like, no offense to lemon lime, but that's, like, you know. I know. I know it's basic, but I like a citrusy water. That's fair. That's like a fair. spa water vibe. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Um, but strawberry lemonade, I think, is going to be my, Ooh. I think that's going to be my, that's a new flavor. That's going to be my flavor of summer. I'm All right. Sure. I yeah. love that. Yes. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. With three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. Bonus, it's non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. My mom could have this. Oh, my God. And your mom yeah. can't have anything. My mom can't have anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She has like major like um food allergies so this is great for her good um and I can attest to the like real it really rehydrating you fast because I've had my life uh my life force drained out of me and then it it (laughs) brings me back babies yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um yeah so get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use dtfu at checkout that's 20% off anything you order when you mm. shop better hydration today using the promo code DTFU at liquidiv.com. Oh, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> my dudes. <laughs> it's just stupid. I just, I'm just having a very hard time. I'm, like, I'm, I don't even understand it all. I, all the why? words that I just said it doesn't make any, a, a lick of sense. Also, uh, I'm sorry, but what a huge colossal fucking waste of money to be s- paying for temperature controlled storage of all that shit. Like I understand having a, a portion of that stored so that, and, and replenishing, you know, so that you always have some for people who need it. But it's like, yeah. what are, what are we doing here? 
Why do we have literal billions of pounds of cheese just in a cave underground? (laughs) Like, what the fuck? And not to mention the, like, the cost of, like, production of all these dairy farms. Yeah. The amount of land being used. The amount. Oh, my God. Like, the amount of, you know, what we feed, like, the cows, like, what the. Right. like yeah, the, just the maintenance of the cows alone, just like yeah. the pollution that it creates, like it's all the drivers <sighs> driving the trucks and the and the stuff to get to these caves and stuff when it's like we don't need more cheese there. Like, let's let it run down a bit and then I have like know. a normal sounding number. It's just gotten it's like it's like a. It, it's it's just a self-perpetuating thing at this point. Where yeah. It's just like, I don't know how I, I don't. It's so unwieldy and so stupid that I don't know that they know how to like. Like, are we dumb? Else. Is that like not a lot of cheese, actually? It is, right? <laughs> it's a lot of cheese. Okay. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Um, Demand. For, OK, this is it's just like it's so much that. And this, it what makes it even more stupid is that demand for dairy in the U.S. has plummeted forty two yeah. percent since nineteen seventy five. Of course, it has. It's but gross. <laughs> we still, we still produce more and more of it. I, I just truly, I don't understand. It's just like the, the dairy industry. I think is such. I think like a lot of industries in this country, but the dairy industry. This like example is just a, a perfect example of a. It's always been done this way, so we have to keep doing it kind of attitude. Oh, my God. Absolutely. My pet peeve. And it's just, I mean, I'm sure there's like a lot of ins and outs that we don't know, that we don't understand, that we don't, can never. Yeah, it's all lobbying and shit. Like, it's, uh, it's like when you go into a supermarket and and you're looking for like an alternative milk, there's literally like one little corner of what is like 50 feet long a fridge or longer of a fridge full of dairy products and they're all coming from the same like companies and stuff it's like lucerne Mm -hmm. nudson yeah and i mean like the I think like the dairy industry like has even like sued a lot of these you oh know, nut milks and stuff nut milks yeah. for for yeah. even using the word milk in I their know. description Bitch, they have to you use do like not own the word milk yeah well, get out of here yeah well they think they do <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god I can't I'm never going back to regular uh, my oat milk lattes every day are so incredibly delicious and i never feel gross yeah i mean i i i love half and half in my coffee if i'm drinking regular coffee it's a different story and i'm only using like you know that yeah like like a couple like a tablespoon or two Also, i love yo i've been making like yogurt bowls Mm -hmm. i eat dairy and i like cheese okay but but it's like i don't need a lot no and if 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 i like you know woke up tomorrow and i would i i couldn't eat dairy anymore I would it would be really really upset because I fucking love cheese I I love cheese I love cheese yeah like everything else you know whatever my second runner-up sour cream okay I love sour cream (laughs) bitch you could just use yogurt for that ew I'd rather have sour cream over yogurt I think no because I'd rather have Greek yogurt. It's like the perfect in between. Yeah. Get just get yourself some Greek yogurt. I never use sour cream anymore because oh my god, yogurt because yogurt is so versatile. You could literally yeah. just like put honey on and eat it. You can't do that with sour cream, baby. You can't like you could. Eat. Why not? It's basically yogurt. No, no, no. I even do my like um like elote. Like I make oh with, mine with like Greek yogurt. yogurt. Yeah, yeah. But you sometimes you need like the the cream the crema. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, oh, oh so my God. <laughs> speaking of like ways to like eat this shit. Yeah. The industry, the dairy industry has found all sorts of ways to get rid of this excess supply. And some are like more fucked up than others. Um, mm. Like in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, and this is like nutritionists have been like saying, please stop eating so much fucking dairy. Yeah. Um, And started like saying like we need to fix the food pyramid we need to like re rework this whole thing um talking about like nutritionists were like 
saturated fats and rising obesity levels are getting like really out of hand. Mm. Um, You're forcing your kids to drink four glasses of milk every yeah, day. Let's, like, let's chill out a little yeah. bit, okay? Um, Swap a couple of those with a glass of water. Yeah, let's drink water. Um, <laughs> the Yeah, so even despite like all of this, despite the, the, the fact that people are not drinking as much milk, whatever, um, the government was like, okay, we, we got this like huge – surplus we still need to get rid of so they made a marketing firm and it was created and partially funded by the usda to give millions of dollars to fast food companies such as taco (gasps) bell and domino's oh to push them to increase the amount of cheese on menu items as much by as much as eight fold oh my god so like um, items like Wendy's dual double melt sandwich oh. concept and Taco Bell's steak quesadilla, the organization, this like made up marketing company, helped boost cheese sales by more than 30 million pounds. Oh, my God. Isn't that crazy? Just like just to reiterate, the government made up a marketing firm to get fast food uh, restaurants to put more cheese on their menu. And I'm speechless. I don't know how to feel about this. Like. I love cheese so much, but the government is making me upset about it. (laughs) Why is the government all in my cheese? Get out of my cheese. Yeah, get out of my cheese. Get out out of my my uterus. Get Get out of my cheese. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, Oh my my God. God. Ew. But also. Good on them. Smart. I don't know. You know what? Because nobody ever said that's too much cheese. Mm. I mean, except for the 1.4 billion. It was like. (laughs) It was like the government was like, um, I don't know, like a really famous celebrity or something. And they just had a bunch of yes men around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's like a it's huge great surplus. idea. Like, oh, yeah. yeah just the bigger, the better. That. Like, literally, like, that's what a president is. Sometimes they're just like yeah. surrounded by a cabinet that's not telling them no. Yeah, like, yeah. Just like, yeah, let's make it happen. Like, our constituents want us to, you know make more cheese products sir yeah but like for decades through multiple presidents and multiple like agricultural states or whatever people of of the i'm telling you if i ever became president i'd be like this is like a day one oh yeah get rid i mean the economy would probably collapse (laughs) yeah i don't care i'm (laughs) let's burn it all down yeah but like honestly no i want like you know what they should do is just like open up the cheese caves for like tours and like yeah. let people let people come shop the cheese cave grab some cheese yeah i also think like uh, there should be incentives from the government to these dairy farms to like cut down on like the amount of cows and stuff and like put other crops back yeah they like start get- growing other things that are more sustainable well then they have to like it's just like the industry is so crazy now that like it yeah. you can't it's just like, like switch it up that quickly yeah like no. it, oh yeah it's it's a, there's a lot going on so anyway yeah and you know just so everyone knows we're not the only country to artificially stabilize agricultural prices by stockpiling food products oh. um china props up pork prices by buying surplus for its frozen pork reserves oh. um and then when like maple syrup supplies run low canada taps into its strategic reserve taps in <laughs> taps in <laughs> um <laughs> and then the european union has a long scandalous history of mm-hmm. accumulating butter mountains wine lakes and milk lakes Ew. the latter of which consisted of vast quantities of skim milk powder housed in warehouses in germany belgium and france Dang. so like th- this is not something that's exclusive to american like dumb fuckery like this is like everybody does it and doesn't make it right it's not right but no it's okay i guess (laughs) it's not right but it's okay in the immortal words of whitney houston Mm -hmm. um oh my god yeah yeah this is it's this is all so wild to me it's like on the one hand i'm like oh good i'm glad the government's involved in like making sure you know these things don't get out of hand and we have enough food to feed everyone and stuff but it's like we're not giving it to them we're just hoarding it in caves underground or whatever Mm -hmm. and it's just so weird um okay so you're talking about that uh marketing firm and at the same time 
And everybody who's a child of the 90s, like, will no doubt remember the Got Milk campaign. Yeah, it's still around. (laughs) It's still around. And I didn't realize that this was, like, something started in California that then moved nationwide. But Mm -hmm. it was, and it's kind of cool. Okay, so this whole campaign came about because milk sales, like you said, started declining in the 80s and 90s. And they were, like, scrambling to get people to drink milk again. So not just, like you know use dairy more dairy products in in fast food and stuff but they were like also we need to sell actual milk and the reason it went down is because soda sports drinks juice that was like a big thing in the 90s and it was in commercials and we all wanted our parents to buy it for us um and so everybody was competing for cup space (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, your Capri Sun, your Mondo Cooler, your Crystal Pepsi, your High C, your mm-hmm. New Coke, whatever it was. It's like Give me that Ecto Cooler, baby. Yeah, Ecto Cooler, yeah. Wasn't a Mondo a thing too? Mm-hmm. Oh, that is the same thing. We talked about the we t- we talked the about Ecto this, Cooler. Uh, no, the Mondo. Yeah. Mondo, Mondo. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so the California Milk Processor Board. So this is like the milk industry in California specifically. They hired Mm -hmm. an ad agency who, after some research, determined that people didn't really prioritize drinking milk. Like, nobody was like, I love milk. I want it all the time. I buy so much. But when someone ran out of it, they had, like, a (laughs) visceral emotional reaction. And so, like, they did these focus groups where they purposefully put, like, a, a... almost empty gallon of milk in the fridge and then they're like oh yeah make yourself some coffee and like come join us and then they would record them and like people would be (laughs) they'd go to get the milk and there would be like two drops in it and they'd be so pissed be like what the fuck (laughs) yeah they'd be like is there excuse me is there more milk and they'd be like no sorry and they'd be like how am I supposed to drink my coffee? You know, like <laughs> so pissed about it and it would ruin their day. And so they were like, <laughs> Ooh, there's something here, you know? And so um, they, <laughs> okay. So, so eventually, funny. yeah, the, the California milk processor board, um, they came across this idea of, okay, well, what if it's like got milk? Like, and, and that's the whole idea. Um, and they knew this was liquid gold and they, mm-hmm started a tv campaign and they they started telling everyone else too they're like hey we, we're on to something you're gonna want this for your state or your networks or whatever um so the first spot they made and this is like a long time beloved commercial and i remember like word for word everybody saying this like acting it out on the playground it was the um got milk aaron burr spot who shot Alexander Hamilton in that yeah. famous duel? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but, and, his, but he's eating a peanut, peanut butter, butter sandwich. Yeah. And so he's his like, mouth's all like gooey. Yeah. And it's like a, a call-in like quiz Yeah. Like a radio. It's yeah. like a radio um, call-in. Like and with he's free like tickets. A, he's like an Aaron Burr like, you know. Or yeah. Like Alexander Hamilton like, uh, you know, expert or something. A historian. Like historian. Yeah. And he has he his mouth is like glued shut and he's yeah. trying to get a drink of milk and he, ha- he ran out of milk and he it's can't like, can't say milk. And he's like, milk. It's so good. It's so and good. Burr. Yeah. And burr. Well, yeah I like, like the one where the guy's burr, in the full body the the full body cast and he like Yes. He can't and yes. everybody's like eating like yeah. uh, donuts or whatever. Yeah. And he's like <laughs> Those are great commercials. They're fucking They're brilliant. They're so funny. There was so one. Good. There was one I forgot about that I remembered where the guy's like, it's just he dies and goes to heaven, and it's just like a ton of cookies. Mm-hmm. And then he is like looking around. He's like eating all these cookies, and he's like, oh, like just this is heaven, you know. And he like goes to the milk, and it's empty. And then he realizes he's in hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so good. And this, I know. The, these were perfect commercials. They were so funny. The sensibility was so great. Like they they were multi layered. Like kids love them, adults love them because they got different like you know insights mm-hmm. from them, and it was so good. Um, and they just kept this going. Like this, the theme essentially was like if you run out of milk, your day, your year, your life goes totally your day, sideways. Your week, your month, <laughs> or even your year. But... <laughs> oh my god. 
Um, and like literally, you'd be watching Friends, and then a Got Milk commercial would yeah. come on. Yeah, that was like that was the vibe. It was they were like prime time spots, mm-hmm. and and they started to become people really started to love them, and so it worked. It helped keep uh, like honestly. It did. I don't know if it increased. I mean, it did increase milk consumption, but like not significantly. You know, it wasn't like suddenly literally everyone's drinking milk anymore, like at this point. But it it did it enough that it helped them with sales. And mm-hmm. it, the whole point was just to keep milk top of mind so you don't run out. So maybe you're like yeah. buying it a little bit more frequently. But even that is helpful, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. OK, so in 1995, the National Milk Processor Education Program, that it's called uh, Milk Pep. <laughs> this this is like the educational I think what that program evolved to it's like mm. this is this is like this is why okay this is my theory I thought of earlier I think this is why um in the fall there's a higher demand for milk because kids go back to school and they're told to drink milk mm-hmm. by the yeah. school who's yeah and making they, them drink it <laughs> and they come home and they're like oh I want chocolate milk or yeah, whatever yeah you know yeah and or cereal That's, and milk. Or cereal and milk. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think it's like, oh, that makes sense because they're being told you should drink milk. It's part of your uh, balanced diet or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. So in they're 1995. They're indoctrinated. <laughs> yes. They're, they're, they're freshly indoctrinated in the fall. Mm-hmm. 1995, Milk Pep licensed the Got Milk tagline. So. Mm-hmm. You know, this was owned by this California milk processor board and they were licensing it out to everyone to utilize. But they were the ones, the milk processor education board were the ones. And this is like very weird because they licensed Got Milk and they are the ones that launched the now infamous print campaign. Got The Got Milk cam- campaign. Yeah, like which is magazines. like weirdly erotic sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like it's like there's chunky white stuff on like JT. JTT's upper lip, Britney Spears' upper lip, Cindy Crawford. Like, and it always mm-hmm. had like a very sexist metaphor about like it, for like people like JTT who were like little heartthrobs. It's like, I got to be big and strong. Mm-hmm. Like, so when I get my first girlfriend or whatever, and then for the women, it's like these curves don't come at, you know, for free or whatever. Like, yeah. I have to drink milk to keep my bones strong to hold up these big titties. Or, you yeah. know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. it like, said- no, I really, I literally remember there was a commercial where it was like a girl's like looking in the mirror and then she like turns into Cindy Crawford or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and you're like, oh, if I drink milk, I'm going to be hot and voluptuous. Yeah. Like, what? Exactly. That's the best. Or it's yeah. like Britney, you know, like, whatever like in her yeah. room and she, yeah or that's like rolling stone but yeah you know she's she's like posing provo- uh provocatively and it, that's like the whole idea which is weird that it came from this like school program mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's very odd to me but yeah. they were influencing children and they had to use whatever means necessary um and also if you were not in this campaign during that time period you were a fucking loser you were not famous okay i don't care yeah, what if anybody your agent said. if your agent wasn't getting you this uh a, a print got milk ad yeah. you were fire trash. them trash yeah i hope you fired them cuz good luck getting an invite to the met gala not going to happen <laughs> uh, and then obviously after this print campaign like billboards came and then parodies and it all worked and this is pretty incredible, but like this campaign specifically, not milk. Everybody knows what milk is, but this campaign of Got Milk had a 90% awareness in the U.S., which is almost impossible. For there's, not, there's literally nothing in the U.S. that has 90% awareness. I think the only <laughs> uh, people might know, like be able to associate Just Do It at that time with Nike. That mm-hmm. was probably pretty high up. I don't know if like McDonald's even had a strong enough campaign that was like very cohesive and long running like to have such a tight like message that also mm-hmm. had your product in the message like it, it's just genius marketing yeah, truly um, and it's you could not do that today no um okay so milk pep discontinued use of the slogan in 2014 they switched to milk life which is so gross to me milk life it doesn't sound good and also is it a parody of like thug life what is the like are they trying to be cool and edgy don't know i hate it yeah 
Um, but they were like, if it ain't broke, change it. <laughs> nope. And they did. Yeah. Well, they went back to it because in 2020, they revived the campaign. And I think they're trying to like sneakily get it to 90 status. Like they're trying to make it a thing again, mm-hmm. which good luck. Mm-hmm. Um, but also they've been in the news. And this is where we kind of get into the zeitgeist we were talking about in the beginning because Aubrey Plaza from Parks and Rec. What? And she's I mean, she's done so much. Oh, uh, the White, White Lotus. Lotus season yeah. two. Yeah. Um, I knew I, I was like, I liked her in something recent. Um, she was just in a quote unquote viral video. I don't know how like viral this thing was, but yeah, she was in an ad and I follow her. So I saw it, but it's like a got, it's like a got wood. Well, yeah, she's like, she's, uh, lampooning the idea of an alternative milk, uh, in the got milk style, in the got milk. but then it like ends with like got milk basically yeah yeah Yeah. and right she's like making fun of nut milks and oat milks and uh, milk made out from made from not dairy yeah and um it's made out of wood milk it's funny yeah it's okay i hated it i had like a visceral reaction to it because i was like what like this isn't even funny Mm. and also ew do you like milk <laughs> i was like judging her yeah that was the whole thing like people were so it, it created controversy because people were like ew milk like what the fuck like it was like yeah yeah not not the reaction i think they were trying to get yeah i don't think so either which they're not it, there's no way that this gets to the status it was in the 90s there's no mm-hmm. way Mm-mm. it even if they had really funny, I mean, maybe if they had really funny commercials like they had in the 90s, you mm. know, like if they had that tone of commercials again, maybe it would be fine. But I think so many people are kind of turned off by like the people love like non-dairy milks now. Mm-hmm. People don't like having diarrhea constantly. <laughs> OK. People don't like shitting their pants on the way to work because they put too much creamer in their coffee. People don't like being reminded of something that they like shouldn't or can't have. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And especially if, if when there's intolerant. especially when there's so many good alternatives now. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not just soy milk. The t- the technology and the like and the 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 companies that have like come out of the you know alternative milk industry are they're really fucking up milk (laughs) production yeah which you know I don't know I don't think it's and you know of course there's like a lot of issues with like almond milk like almonds right are are a lot of uh take a lot of resources take a lot of resources to you know to farm so it's just like uh, there's like trade-offs for everything but like I don't know. I feel like oat milk is the future. It's so good. It's, you, you know. You can just make it at home if you really need to. Yeah, you can. It doesn't, it's not as good. No. I, when I've made it, it's very, um, and maybe it's the oats I'm using, but it's very like, Water. hey. Oh. It's very hay forward. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes very like dirt, dirty. Maybe toast the Maybe, oats. yeah, toasted oats yeah. might be good, but I... Yeah, I, I, you know, and it is true. Like, it's like I've I'm so quick to be like, yuck, dairy milk and gross. Fuck that. And I want to drink this alternative milk. But we don't really know the impact yet of like we're learning about almond milk and, you know, we'll learn about other milks, too. And, you know, they might be, you know, stuff like coconut milk, like coconuts aren't native to the United States. So we're obviously like sourcing coconuts for coconut milk somewhere. And there could be implications of like who's farming them. And, you know, like mm-hmm. we don't really fully know, but we do know that the dairy industry is going to push us to drink dairy when yeah. it's not even necessary to like our diet. <laughs> yeah, and it's like what's the what's the uh, you know, all, you got to be informed when you go to the the yeah. store and like figure out what you want to buy. I I think this is like the biggest thing. It's like Yeah. Or buy what you like, I guess. Buy what you too, like. You know? Buy what you like. Buy what, buy what you you need. Yeah. Like, a lot of people buy can't just need. cannot 
have dairy, period. Yeah. My mom is like, it's not intolerant. She's allergic to it. So, yeah. like, it's just, like, so many people cannot have dairy. And, yeah. you know, that's why there's, I, we're stoked there's good alternatives. Thank mm. God. Yeah. Um, they're really, they're getting better and better. Yeah. And the dairy industry is shook. <laughs> mm-hmm. Watch out. <laughs> I mean, have you tried cashew butter? <laughs> it's have you so tried good. have you tried cashew cheese? Like there's it's also so good. There's all kinds of cashews are magical. Truly. I love making vegan queso. It's better to me than regular queso because I made it and I know what's in it and it's there's like nothing processed in it. You know what I mm-hmm, mean? Like mm-hmm. and it's just made with nuts and seasonings and nutritional yeast and water. Yeah, that's right. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Yeah. I mean, it's very high in calories because <laughs> it's all nuts. But you know what? I don't know. Love it. I feel calorie. nourished. Yeah. That's right. I feel nourished. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But that's pretty much, I mean, I this all blew my mind. I know. I, I just had no idea. And um, yeah, you know, the inner workings of uh, the United States uh economic fucking whatever is very confusing and yeah. a lot of i feel like a lot of it we could blame a lot of it on the military industrial complex mm-hmm. like always um yeah. because a lot of the this didn't get started until we entered world war 1 so yeah. Yeah. And all of it was like wartime effort after war and then world war 2 rolled around so Yeah. It's wild that the thought at that point too was like not to help them get back to where they were before you know it's like Mm -hmm. how do we how do we use our resources to like reset everything it's like okay Mm -hmm. well this is what it is now i guess we'll just have extra dairy like well we don't need extra and then it's like oh too late now we're stuck with it literal decade later almost century oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) A decade times 10 is what I was. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's tired. I'm tired too. Well, all right. I'm going to go eat some cheese. I'm going to, me uh, too. And a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Where they were told to put extra in. Give me extra cheese all day. Every yeah. Day. Um, but not too much because I might get a tummy ache. (laughs) (laughs) I might get gas. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, uh, that's all I got. Hey, uh, follow us on social media everywhere at DTFU Podcast. Mm -hmm. Go to our website. It's DTFUPodcast.com. We have all kinds of fun stuff. Buy a hat. Buy a sweatshirt. Buy something cool. Yeah. I was going to say summer's coming and a hat or a Mm t-shirt would be like so fun and cute. Mm-hmm. and keep the sun out of your face uh yeah. hat would yeah love it mm-hmm. so fun um oh and you could also still submit stories oh yeah for anytime our, our ai uh our chat our chat gpt game yeah um that we will do next week so get those in and um just or and just you know send us stories anytime always yeah um and that's it Stay excellent to yourselves and each other. Bye. Bye.